Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tipped. My name is Julian, and this is the Drops episode for week 23 of the fantasy hockey season. Now guys, this is the playoffs for everybody at this point. So it's a really important that you drop the players from your team who are just not producing. Now, if someone on your team, like for example, a table Tara Vinen who was not producing, and there's someone out there that's pretty much the same caliber as talent as he is, and he actually is producing, I would take a chance on him and drop Tara Vinen. But if there's someone out there that's just clearly a lesser talent and is on a bit of a hot streak right now, like maybe uh, McBain or something, I probably would hold on to Teravina and cross my fingers, unless Teravina doesn't fit in my lineup, in which case I'd probably go with Nick Bain anyway, because he's got the off nights. Now in this video, guys, not only am I going to be telling you guys that you should consider dropping, I'm going to have a section at the end with some additional potential ads for this week as well, because some things have changed since I released my waiver wire video a few days ago. So definitely, definitely, if you want some good ads, Stay tuned till the end of the video because I'm going to have a solid section on players that you should consider adding to your team. Jumping into forwards now that you should consider dropping from your team and first on the list is Philip Forsberg. Now if you have an IR spot that's actually being used up by him and you don't need the IR spot for anything else, hang on to Philip Forsberg. There's still a chance that he plays between now and the end of the season. The thing is, the last update we got, which was like three weeks ago, said that Philip Forsberg was going to be back soon. So I don't know what happened between then and now that he's still day to day and that he's still not ready to skate, but it's not super encouraging. Like I said, guys, if you have the IR space, hang on to him because if he returns, he's going to be huge for your fantasy team. But if you're super desperate and you've got a whole bunch of injuries and you just have no choice but to drop Phyllis Forsberg, it's not the worst option in the world because he may not return before the end of the year. That's a possibility. Then I have Andrei Svechnikov, who is an easy drop at this point because, well, Andrei Svechnikov is out for the rest of the season. He's still 68% roster, which makes no sense. Anybody who has him, guys, get rid of him from your fantasy team. Definitely don't waste a roster spot on him. Max Domi's a third liner on Dallas. That's kind of what I was worried about when he was dealt there. They have a lot of deep talent in Dallas now, so Domi playing on the third line, isn't getting the best opportunities in the world, and he's not my favorite option in terms of players for this week, and he doesn't exactly play on the best nights either. He plays on the busy nights with Dallas, so not my favorite option this week. Uh, Domi is definitely droppable for someone out there like a McBain, like a Michelli, like a Kraus, like a Barrett Hayton, like a Nick Schmaltz that plays on the off nights that's definitely more worth having in your lineup than Max Domi. Andrew Mangiapane of the Calgary Flames is playing on the top line with Toffoli and Lindholm and still not doing anything. So he's a drop, guys. Definitely make the room in your lineup for someone who's a little bit better, who's actually producing, or someone who plays on those off nights to help you win. He's not a drop in every single league. Like if you're in a super deep, deep league and you're desperate and you just need someone for that lineup, Manjapan is not the worst option. He is getting first line deployment and he does have points in consecutive games. The peripherals aren't amazing, but if you're super desperate, don't drop him, but there's definitely better options out there than Andrew Mangiapane. Then finally, Andre Palat is playing third line in New Jersey and hasn't gotten a point in so, so long. Not someone that I like at all to be picking up right now. If you have him on your team, drop him. There are definitely better options. Out on the waiver wire, uh, almost anybody is a better option than him right now because he's really doing nothing. Jumping into defenseman and first one, let's say we have Thomas Shabbat of the Ottawa Senators. 79% roster, and no, he's not a must drop by any means whatsoever. Ottawa has recently switched up their power play, and they have either Sanderson there or no defenseman on it at all on their top unit, and then they have both Chikrin and Shabbat on their second pairing power play. So that definitely lowers Shabbat's value, and on top of that, he hasn't really been producing a lot at all as of late. Now, obviously, if I'm in a super deep league, there's not going to be anybody better out there than Thomas Shabbat on my waiver wire. But if I'm desperate and I'm near the end of the week and I need someone to drop to add someone to desperately help me potentially win this week, and there's nobody better on your team than Shabbat to be dropping, then I might consider it. Ottawa does not play on Sunday, so if you need to drop them in like a points based league to try and grab a goalie out of desperation or some other player out of desperation, you can definitely do that and not worry too much about dropping him. 
Otherwise, I'd probably hang on to Shabbat because he's bound to turn it around. Tyson Berry is also somebody I'm looking to drop, but not right at this second. If Yossi stays out, then Barry has a little bit of value being the only defenseman manning the top power play. If Yossi comes back, then Barry uh, doesn't see a whole lot of top power all the time. He still, he still saw a little bit when Yossi was there, but he's not someone that has an overly large amount of value in my opinion because you saw he wasn't producing at all for Nashville when Yossi was in the lineup. So Barry is an easy drop because he's not producing. You could hang on to him though until Yossi comes back. Then I have Shane Gossespierre of the Carolina Hurricanes and he is a must drop. I was very wary about his value when he was traded to Carolina because he's only playing PP2. It turns out that I was right. Unfortunately, he's only got one point in his last seven games and that was just an assist. Just not a whole lot of value here for Shane Goss this year. That's why he's a very easy drop at this point. There's much, much better players available to you. I had Goss Spear in a lot of my leagues, dropped him in all of them because at this point, he just doesn't hold a whole lot of value. Eric Gustafson of the Toronto Maple Leafs, just not getting the top power play time that he was in Washington. So just not a lot of value. He gets healthy scratch as well sometimes over there. So definitely, definitely not someone that I want on my team. Mark Giordano with all the new acquisitions in Toronto, like Jake McCabe and Luke Shen. Giordano was pushed down the depth chart and he's not getting a whole lot of ice time anymore. So the peripherals are still okay, but really nothing too crazy. And he's not getting any power play two time anymore. So the points aren't going to come as frequently. Giordano is droppable as well. If you need somebody uh, to string. Jumping into goalie is very similar to last week. Jack Campbell's not starting any games. So he's an easy drop. Cam Talbot is injured until at least, at least March 30th. So that's probably near the end of your playoffs, guys. So probably worth dropping. And if you play the following week, it definitely could be worth holding on to. As long as you have room on your IR, you might as well hold on to Cam Talbot. Martin Jones is someone I'm looking to drop as well. He's not getting a whole lot of starts at all. And even though Grubauer left the last game, he wasn't injured. He was just sick. So I doubt Grubauer misses more than another game at at the very most. So Martin Jones just really doesn't have a lot of value because Grubauer is the starter over there in Seattle. Spencer Knight. He's in the player assistance program, guys. May not return for the rest of the season. Not worth hanging on to, guys. Unless you have room on your IR, you, I guess you might as well hold on to him. But even when he does come back, how many games is he really going to be starting if he does come back at all? And then Jake Allen of the Montreal Canadiens. He's a must drop at this point. The Habs are playing some very bad hockey, letting in a lot of goals. And Jake Allen has not played well at all. Letting in a lot of goals and not a lot of shots really hurt a lot of people in the fantasy playoffs. So if you made it through, despite having him, get rid of him because he's just a hindrance to your team at this point. Now, like I promised you at the beginning of the video, guys, there are some new ads that I'm going to be suggesting here in this video. One of them is Ryan Hartman, up to 42% rostered, getting top line and top power play time in Minnesota without Kirill Kaprizov because he's out for quite a bit. So Hartman has been playing pretty well and definitely could make for a decent ad if you don't mind a player that plays on the busy nights if for some reason you have room on those nights. Charlie Lindgren is someone you could be looking at as well. Kemper is day-to-day -day with an upper body injury, so he could start the next couple games for Washington. If you're desperate for a starting goalie, Lindgren is that for at least the next little bit. Now, I know he led in five goals last game in his first game as the starter, but he also faced 40 shots. He didn't exactly play too badly. Obviously not my favorite option in Nets, but if you are desperate for a goalie who's going to get starts, Lindgren is definitely an option right now. Sammy Blay is another option right now that I like for St. Louis. He's playing with Luke Shen on the second line, as well as with Brendan Saad, which is not a terrible deployment for him. He has been scoring goals, getting points, continues to get hits, which is very important as well in categories leagues where you need to, you know, get some hits on your total there. And in points-based leagues as well, that gives you a safe floor for hits. Sammy Blay is actually a pretty solid ad right now. Callie Yarncroak is someone who's looking really hot right now. And as long as he stays this hot, guys, amazing ad. He's playing on the top line with Austin Matthews, and he's really loving being there right now because he is producing like crazy. He's available in 94% of leagues, and if you have a room on the busy nights, Yarncroak is worth a grab. Ivan Prosvitov is the best goalie in Arizona. I know I told you guys that Vimelka had stolen back the crease, and it looked like he had because Ingram had played terribly, but then Arizona decided to, you know, run three goalies out of nowhere. So Prosvitov's randomly getting starts, and he's playing so freaking well that I would probably say that he's going to get the majority of the starts going forward in Arizona. Obviously, it's super risky to pick him up because they do have three goalies, so they may alternate a lot. 
But right now, Profitov is playing insanely, insanely well. And if you are really desperate for a goalie and there's really nothing else to be picking up right now, Profitov could get those off nights that Arizona plays on Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. It's risky, but it could be worth the gamble. Then I have Pierre Engelval of the New York Islanders finally, and he's playing on the top line with Brock Nelson in New York. And he's also on the second power play, and he has been producing a lot as of lately. Definitely helps to play with Brock Nelson, one of the best players on the Islanders. And he's a sneaky ad right now, available in 99% of leagues. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you enjoyed the content today, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to take your support to the next level, please check out the link to my Patreon in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tech.